Hello, my name is Summer Carter. I live here in Anacortes. Um, you may have seen me around. Um, I have two daughters, one that graduated already from Anacortes High School and um, a junior this year. Also, I work with the Anacortes Music Project and um, throughout the year we put on all kinds of all ages um, music events entirely with bands from Anacortes. Um, but today I am going to show you um, some of the work that I have done in my life, um, which is um, throwing pots on a wheel. There's a lot of ways to work with clay and there are many um, clay artists in our town, so you may hear from others besides me. But uh, this is my studio and what I do, I, um, I make things that are functional. So uh, today I'm going to make a cup and then I will trim it and you'll see what the final product looks like um, based on things I've made before. Um, I've got a piece of clay here that's been wedged and um, it's about ready to go on the wheel. So I have a piece of clay on the wheel and um, this is a kick wheel so there's also um, electric wheels where you just have a pedal and it would do the spinning electrically. So right now um, I'm centering the clay. Uh, this is a one pound piece of clay and um, I'm wanting to get it to a place that it's not wobbly. It feels like, yeah, it's called centered. So. So here I'm bringing the ball of clay into a cone, um, which helps it find center and then I'll press it down. This is, um, this is a practice that I always come back to when I'm working. It seems like no matter how many years I've been working on this, often learning or reconnecting with centering the clay seems like is always a part of it. I just, I think it is part of the Um, the physical experience of working with clay is it's kind of like working with fire no matter how many times you've built a fire sometimes you struggle getting it to start and fire and clay have a way of teaching us to always come back to basics um, and uh, kind of relearning the things you thought were so simple sometimes you have to relearn the simple things the rest the rest of your life I'm using both my hands here and trying to, like, um, I'm holding steady so that the clay can find its center within my steady hands. Um, if I try to go with where the clay is going, I will not, it will not get centered. You know that it's centered when it is not wobbling. Okay, so now um, I'm going to flatten this out, kind of make a tabletop. I want it nice and flat. I'm gonna, my thumbs will find the center and I'll go in and start to open up the clay. So I'm, I'm gonna go until about a quarter of an inch to the bottom and Oh, right. So now that I've made my little hole in the middle, my well, now I can open, I can open it up. And again, this every time it's just um, keeping is still like you, uh, the, the hands are holding, holding the, the still is holding a stillness and then letting the clay move within it. I'm pulling slowly out, so I'm, I can feel the speed of the wheel, and I'm gently pulling with it. And then like within each, every single time, there's a kind of cleaning up of um, like reorienting the workspace to keep it 
to keep it centered really throughout the whole process. So now that I've opened it, I'm gonna put my finger in and press firmly. Um, I, my goal here is to make sure that the base of my pot um, is, doesn't have holes in it. I don't have air bubbles or, and it's, um, it's nice and secure. I'm building from here. Clean the water out. I don't want it getting so wet that it gets mushy. So now I'm going to do my first pull. Um, I use my knuckle to go in under. I have a kind of mushroom here, and that's that's a fine thing to have. Um, and I'm going to be pulling inside and outside at the same time, like equal pressure, um, lifting the clay up. From the bottom, just moving with the speed of the wheel is, is what's really pushing it, and I'm just showing it where I want it to go. So as I'm moving it, you can see there, there's some, like it's, it's not exactly flat, but the more level and uniform I keep it, the more likely I'm going to keep it in center as I continue to work. A teeny tiny little little cup right now. This is going to keep on growing. I'm going for probably what could be a coffee mug if I put a handle on it or just a, like a stemless wine glass. Now if I don't have much, uh, I'm, I'm using, going in with my thumb here to give my knuckle a place to go in the clay and where to lift from. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's always our, you know, bring it back into, kind of cull it back into shape. Mm -hmm for the most um, ease of lifting it up and getting the height that you want. And then, and then you, you shape it from there. My teacher introduced us to this wonderful part of our body, the right between your, the webbing part, right between your fingers. It's like, makes sense that something that you use with your hands and your body you would have the tools to make to make those things with your hands and your body. So it kind of makes a beautiful little look. You don't need any special tool. You already have it in your hands. So keeping it dry on the inside. So this right now is a cylinder, just a classic cylinder. Um, and just using this tool to clean it up and smooth it out. I'm always supporting, always having some contact with the clay. The, the, like this whole work is about connection and feeling it so even if both my hands aren't on the pot one of my hands will be touching my hand to the hand that's touching the pot um, and that keeps me from erratically moving and just holding her steady so I'm gonna just trim the bottom here just a little bit tomorrow when it's dry I'll go in or leather hard so it's not so fragile. I can turn it upside down and, and work the bottom of it. But this will just give me, um, let's clean it up. Just a, a chamois, then it um, gives it a fine, a finishing, finishes it so that it's really smooth. This is gonna be for someone's lips, so you want it smooth. 
air cylinder and um, my little knife tool here I cut in at the very bottom so it just makes it easier for my wire tool to have a place to go and now I'm gonna use that with my thumbs keeping it directly on the board I'm just gonna slide right through so then tomorrow when I go when I when it's dried to leather hard um, I'll be able to easily take this off my board and turn it upside down and then we'll trim. In the meantime, it's just going to sit right here and then we'll come back tomorrow and trim. So we're back um, a day later and we're going to trim. So I've had uh, my pots under plastic. Um, it's sunny in here. This is really kind of a greenhouse, which is lovely, but also can um, heat up too much. So covering them in plastic. Um, keeps the pot from drying too fast before I can get to it. And then I'm going to center again. Everything is about centering. Um, before I trim off all the excess clay. So in, in some way you leave clay on there so that um, it has stability while it's drying. And then um, it allows you to further form your pot um, in a drier state. Uh, it, isn't, it doesn't give as much. Um, so that's what we're going to do now, and there's a lot of different ways you can go about centering. I kind of just prefer to gently, I, I guess this is a good example, you can kind of see when it's out of center, that's not centered, and then now it's much more centered, it just kind of comes into and I hold my hand as still as I can to feel. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then I will anchor it down with my wet clay. And just hold her steady. Okay. So all this being at home is kind of wonderful. This has given me a chance to get back in this studio to clean it. It hadn't been cleaned in a year and a half. Um, so I got to clean it and remember this part of my life. And it's also kind of hard not being able to see our friends and family members and be in school and do so many of the things that we love. So I'm happy to be here with you and um, I hope everyone is finding ways to be creative and feel very much alive, uh, even as we're not connected with each other as much as we like to be. So now I'm using, this is um, a trimming tool. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna start on the outside and I have quite a lot of clay here. So I'm just holding it down and then I layer by layer take away excess clay. I don't want it to feel like a paperweight. Working with um, functional pottery, it is an honor to get to create something that feels really good in one's hands. It feels really good in one's to one's lips um, when you're using this to eat, to drink. Um, it should feel really good to you. And everyone's different, and the pots I make, um, you know, are unique to me and what I like, and hopefully um, are a pleasure to my loved ones who also eat and drink from them. But I'm learning a lot about it, uh, you know, the, the idea of a craft and then um, being able to bring that into... Um, something that has integrity and is beautiful but also works well. So I have a lot of clay here to trim away and um, and I'm also wanting to develop or you know carry on with the form I started yesterday um, and keep that those curves happening. I'm using this mirror to help me see um, what's on the other side. 
so it's just, you know, a perspective. And I'm going to take a little bit more off here, kind of I haven't even addressed the bottom yet, which I will in a second here, but we're going to, I'll flip it over and we'll look inside and see, but feel it and, and see how the walls of the pot are feeling and how much more is going on. So, yeah, that's, that's starting to feel pretty good. So I can feel all the way down about how thick the walls are and it's, I have a little more fat here, so I'm going to trim a little bit more away there. And then the bottom, often you can hear how thick it is, but it's. I'm just going to take a little bit away because I like how it feels to hold a pot, a cup, in my hand. And, um, and I guess I just like, I want to like how everything feels. So um, the bottom of the cup, you might not notice that you notice that but next time you drink out of a cup see how the bottom of the cup feels in your hand and I'll bet you have an opinion about it so I'm gonna just clean clean up those lines that I made and then we'll go in and work on the bottom maybe that is and now I'm going to take away some of that clay on the bottom. And there's a lot of ways to do, I'm not going to have a, um, a foot. So if I were, I would go about it differently, but you can kind of see that I'm not totally centered. <laughs> it's, it's unfolding here. That's all right because I'm I'm going to carve out and kind of make an internal cup here at the bottom of mine instead of having um, a foot. I just like how it feels. I like how it looks. Mostly I like how it feels. So I'll I'll come all the way out. I'm just, it'll be a gentle, a gentle bowl on the underside of my pot. A little bit of water here and up and softening up these last few bits. And with my fingers, really that's what I'm going for. Ooh, I don't want to take off some of that. But um, I love having this soft bottom here. The tiniest bit of water to soften it and smooth it. A final stage. This is greenware and it's going to dry. Um, this was just made these last two days. I'll still work on this probably and just use my fingers to soften things out. And it's, you know, it's the practice of enjoying what it feels, you know, holding clay in your hands. I think all of us know that feeling of working in the dirt and mud and sand and so you can just play with it as long as you like and create the, the surfaces that you like and it's just experiment and so this is a bone dry this is ready for its first fire which would go into a bisque kiln and when it comes out it's pink and uh, then when it comes out this gets glazed, goes back in, and now this is a final piece. And you can see that this is the bare clay at the bottom. This is the same clay as this clay. And you can, the bottom is where uh, you can see the gray, where we originated. But isn't that beautiful how, how the fire 
and the soda um, brought brought this aspect of the clay out and so it's part of the beauty is is the clay itself um, that's basically the process and there's a million aspects to it um, here's a couple other pieces that I've worked on over the years um, a mixing bowl I've made um, a set of dishes for my whole family and so there's dinner plates and pasta bowl. I love bowls. I love tiny bowls and tiny things, which is a good thing because so many things shrink in the kiln um, significantly. But um, thank you for watching and I hope that you find something that you would like to make with your hands while we have this time um, home and um, time to explore something new, so enjoy.